Hello, my name is Anthony Patch, and this is Pulse. This is a secular geopolitical presentation on the day's events, and today I'd like to entitle this presentation for your benefit as The Reset, Take One. I've chosen this title because we understand the concept, the notion, that all the world is a stage and much of what we experience is prescribed, it's scripted. I don't think there's too much debate about that. Since in the early morning hours of today, which is the 19th of July of 2024, on a global basis, there was an IT or, to put it in more familiar language, a computer outage, a cyber event. It's not being called a cyber attack, but a cyber outage. This I consider to be something that we have shared with our subscribers at anthonypatch.com that we have discussed since really June of 2020 during the COVID event. June of 2020, we started reflecting the statements coming out of the World Economic Forum concerning a reset and how this is a opportunity to remake the world. And in the verbiage or the, the statement or the label from so-called elites, this is order out of chaos, a reset. What we have experienced in the last almost 24 hours globally is what I consider to be a trial run. Take one in the theater of the reality that we experience here that this is a dry run. Some might categorize it as predictive programming, but that's more specific to what we experience through the media, through movies, television, radio, and so forth. And of course, that includes the internet. The internet has been portrayed for many years as being robust, redundant systems, and in the more recent times, say the last 10 years or so, the advent of the cloud-based computing has reinforced this notion that the internet has a great deal of robust integrity. That, in other words, it would be very difficult to shut down the entire global internet. Well, today's events have demonstrated that it is quite fragile. To speak briefly about the history of the internet, we go back to Microsoft and DOS, a digital operating system. If you are of the generation of myself, this is familiar to you. To much younger viewers of this video, you may not be familiar with DOS, but this was the original language of the original operating systems for personal computers and this is where Microsoft was originated from its operating system what has been assigned the cause to this dry run this take one in a theatrical sense to the reset has been blamed on CrowdStrike, which is itself a cybersecurity company. And for the most part, clients of CrowdStrike, not CrowdSource, but CrowdStrike, they are the ones that experienced an outage due to what is, again, being put out in the media as an update to their systems, a software update that obviously went awry. No doubt you're aware of this event, you're aware of the coverage, 
globally, the airports, emergency systems, 911 here in, in the United States, in different areas, different states, that has been reported as this taking 911 offline. Obviously, with such a tremendous impact, not in totality, but a tremendous impact nonetheless, being called the worst IT outage or cyber outage in history, we need to understand that this DOS-based system, and this takes us back into the 1970s, early 80s, DOS, is that that still exists. The phenomenon of the internet, networked computer systems, a web-based system, is that it builds upon itself. So if you have a first-generation programming language like DOS, everything that comes after the release date of DOS, of course, there's another generation, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and the like, no matter what the software system is. We've all become so familiar with these updates and next generations that we forget that the foundation still exists in the background, is still operating in the background. And I take you from the 80s up to 1999 and the whole hysteria about the year 2000, which again reflected the base operating language, the programming of DOS. It was alleged that the computer clock was not going to successfully roll over from 1999 to 2000, that it was going to go to zero. It was going to reset. So as we fast forward to today and cloud-based systems, even quantum computing and all the like, and artificial intelligence, I just suggest that you bear in mind that no matter whether the operating system or a particular software program does not include DOS, because not everything does, not all operating systems are built on DOS, but they all started with a basic system of lines of code. And if there were any errors in the original foundational lines of code, those don't disappear. Yes, there is the ability to self-correct, to self-identify. But this reveals really the Achilles heel to computing systems, is that there are not necessarily purposefully embedded bugs, but there are bugs in the software. A great deal of software engineering is devoted to debugging, which means identification of a bug. Again, this event today reflects the vulnerability because there are still bugs that can affect new coding, new lines of coding. CrowdStrike and Microsoft operating systems operating with CrowdStrike's security, cybersecurity software systems were the systems that were primarily affected. Um, other operating systems were not. Again, it reflects the DOS history of Microsoft. The concept of the reset, as I view it, and have presented it with my wife Kathleen since June of 2020, is what we have called the flipping of the switch, as if you were turning off a light switch, bringing down the entire internet, and then at some point in the near future, perhaps a matter of days, a matter of a week, but not much further beyond, let's say, two or three weeks, the Internet 3.0 would be brought online. This would be a semantic web. This would be a web that is, involves full power transmission, not the low power that we experience today, but high full power transmission of 5G and 6G and 7G.
Wi-Fi. We have in our live streams behind our paywall through Subscribestar at anthonypatch.com and we now have another subscription service. You can go to our homepage, you can go to the tab on the homepage that says subscribe. Behind this paywall as it's known, this private live streaming platform that now contains over 850 two-hour live streams, Kathleen and myself present three live streams a week. Each live stream is two hours in duration and now there are some 850 of those. We also publish in Tangled Magazine, a science magazine, every month since June of 2017. As a subscriber, you have full access to all the archives of Entangled Magazine and all of our live streams and webinars that we've presented. What I'm, what I'm indicating to you is that beyond the secular presentation here on YouTube, we go into a faith-based viewpoint on the world events, biology, computing systems, including quantum computing, particle physics, genetic modification, a full breadth of scientific, but also we get into the economic. And the reset is an economic reset brought on by the flipping of the switch, taking down the internet, which results in what the World Economic Forum and others have presented since 2020 as an opportunity with a cyber attack, something WEF and UN and other organizations have been warning about and, and most every government and most IT companies, certainly cybersecurity companies, have warned that it's not a matter of if but when that the entire internet, global internet, at once ceases to operate. Many people may have thought that that is very far-fetched. I think today's event demonstrates clearly, unequivocally, that it is not difficult to bring the entire internet down. Being based upon layers and layers and generations of software coding renders it very vulnerable. And it does not necessarily need to entail a cyber attack, a Trojan horse sort of software program or anything like that, or worms or the like. Really, this comes down to a mechanical induced flipping of the switch. This is really going to the system and shutting it down. There's a cascading effect that happens, and we've experienced that today. When you disable a group of cloud-based server systems, when you just as one example, this could be a, an attack on undersea fiber optic cables. When you attack in a significant way one portion, one portion of the mechanical hardware of the system, not necessarily a software attack, but a hardware attack, taking down a significant portion in one location results in a cascading event around the world. Now, cyber professionals will say that's not possible because they don't want their clients knowing that it is possible. Today's events prove my statement. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that this was a cyber attack. This appears, it sounds from reports, that this was a software-generated issue, which lends even more credence to the idea that if the hardware of the system is disabled. This will cascade globally. So understanding a little bit, and again, when we present in the private forum, our live streams, I do a much deeper dive and I move beyond the faith-based presentation to other 
significant influences and results in a reset. But the reset is an economic event. As the WEF has presented, this is an opportunity to zero out all debts. The global economy operates in a debt-based manner. And assets from that system are not truly assets. They themselves have their origin in debt. Therefore, the thing that needs to be appreciated is when state statements are made about the economic reset and you will be happy because you won't have any debts, your debts are forgiven, you'll be happy but you won't own anything. The flip side to that is what you consider to be your assets, your investments, 401ks, retirement accounts, etc., and insurance policies, they all disappear. When the debt-based system is shut down, all assets and all liabilities go to zero. When the internet returns as Internet 3.0, the semantic web, this will be a system of one cryptocurrency on a global basis. This will be a system that will be a permission system. Again, I'm putting this in a secular language, but in our private live streams, I present this in the real manner that it needs to be understood. But nonetheless, in this platform's community standards that I'm attempting to adhere to, this is a internet system and a economy based on one cryptocurrency that requires permission to access. So if anyone has the notion that, well, gee, debt forgiveness, even if I lose all my assets, we get a chance to start over with the perception of a level playing field, that there won't be the ultra-rich, the one percenters, as they're called, that have most of the wealth of the world, or at least control over it, leaving the rest of us with very little. The, the new economy under Web 3.0 will be worse than what we're experiencing now. But the focus of my presentation here today is to share with you from a big picture perspective that this event clearly demonstrates the vulnerability of the entire global internet. When you have country after country experiencing a near complete shutdown of their internet communication systems. It extends beyond Microsoft. Yes, it's specific to Microsoft operating systems, but the ripple effect, the economic impact, the civil disturbance impact, the fear that is generated, this is purposeful. This is intentional. This is a warning. This is a demonstration in the movie that's playing out, this is take one. We can appreciate that people now are really concerned about how dependent we are on the internet now that they are seeing it for themselves, how fragile it is. What I hope to convey to you is a message of encouragement, not that there will be a secular solution to this, but there rather is a faith-based solution. I'm not permitted to elaborate beyond that, okay? Um, I would like to mention also one of my expectations. When I say mine, this is I'm speaking for my wife as well. We're a team together in our research and our reporting. During the time frame in which the web will be down, the flipping of the switch to off, we are expecting the expected, the promoted next pandemic. 
much like the vulnerability of the internet, that it's not a matter of if but when the entire internet will come down, resulting in an economic reset, the same language and even the same outlets are warning there will be another pandemic. It's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. The when, in our estimation, our expectation, is during this global blackout, if you want to call it that, that there will be a pandemic that will be purposefully re released. So, again, I can't go into specifics here because of the community standards of YouTube, which we abide by. I'm not railing against it, I'm just saying we're operating within those guidelines. That's why we have a private live streaming platform where we can speak freely. And if that's of interest to you, I encourage you to join us there. We also have our own private chat room. Um, that's on the platform Band, B-A-N-D, and you'll have full access to that. Um, so in this dry run, we not only have the 911 systems that were affected, we also have banking. ATMs. And so people are experiencing, they're getting, a, as I like to say, a taste of what's to come. So imagine going to your local ATM and you need some cash for some sort of purchase that you need to do that day. And you're not able to withdraw any cash from your account. That is frustrating, to put it mildly. Imagine thousands and thousands, and in the worst case scenario of the actual reset, virtually everyone experiencing the denial of access to their bank accounts. And then learning that all of the bank assets, their bank accounts, are at zero. There may be some forms of communication for the propaganda for the powers that be, the local governments, etc., to put out certain information to the community. So there may be some limited communication, and in that communication, there may be that word that, hey, you no longer have any money in your bank account. Everything has gone to zero. They want to promote that information, so it will be communicated, okay? This is order out of chaos. You can certainly well appreciate the chaos that's going to result. There is a certain level of chaos that was experienced already today. Magnify that time many times. Okay. Um, there was in one news report this phrase regarding a hospital that was impacted, and the representative of the hospital stated they are recording data on paper. What an interesting euphemism for pen and paper, right? Recording data on paper. Why can't you just say, hey, we're using pen and paper until our systems come back online? Why the verbiage? Recording data on paper. Yeah, okay, great. You're taking notes on a notepad. Something I just want to, as a programming note regarding our live streams, Tuesday and Thursday, today is Friday, Friday the 19th, Tuesday and Thursday of this week, I um, presented in a great bit of detail on the transition plan following the presidential elections regarding the conservative party, should the conservative party candidate win the election on November 5th and in January be sworn in as the next president of the United States. Upon that inauguration, a transition plan would be put in motion. I, have for two live streams now, have presented the details and the impact, the context and the impact of what is known as Project 2025. This is primarily spearheaded by the think tank, the conservative think tank, the Heritage Foundation. 
if you would like that deep dive, that information, and those insights and, and contextual presentation of the impact of this transition plan that is impacting the present time, not January 2025, but how it has a cause and effect right now, this transition plan, on the opposite side, the so-called liberal side that is already reacting to this transition plan. And it has been public knowledge since 2023. So it's interesting that we have the impact of this cyber event, which is being called the, the worst IT event in history. Well, in the history of the internet. <clears throat> At the same time, the strategic plan has been made public that is causing division, causing reaction. And to some, to close here this short presentation, the basic modus operandi, the operandi, the MO, for those that we characterize as being in a position of control. Some people call them the elite. The modus operandi is the Hegelian dialectic of problem, reaction, solution. A scripted, pre-planned, initiated program, uh, problem, a synthetic problem that causes a reaction in the public, in the public arena. And following the reaction, a solution is presented, a synthetic solution, a prescribed, a premeditated, scripted solution. The reset is a problem reaction solution scenario. The coming pandemic, likewise. What we should all expect and bear in mind as we sort of look at it, try to pull back and look at things from a big picture perspective is not to get caught in the left-right paradigm, that's a given, to maintain your own independent thought and critical thinking, to be able thus to be able to pull back and see the bigger picture of what is unfolding and appreciate and recognize that we are being manipulated. Through a variety of mechanisms, we are being manipulated. Your independent thought is critical because the majority of the global population is not and will not be thinking critically, thinking independently, when the reset occurs, when the internet globally goes down, when there is the blackout, and I mean that, that's electrical systems, the electrical grid, communication systems for the most part will go down. People will be blind. They'll be cut off from their communication systems that they're so dependent and really that they're addicted to. So begin to consider this. This take one, as I'm calling it, is a demonstration of what is to come and therefore provides us the opportunity to prioritize, to prudently prepare for what is now being communicated to us as an event that is about to occur. It's not a matter of if, it is a matter of when, but when, I think, is being communicated to us as an event horizon that is rapidly approaching. So prudently prepare as you see fit. Thank you for your time and attention today, and we will have many more of these geopolitical presentations up until the flipping of the switch.